Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to part 4 of my full Platinum walkthrough for Bloodborne. Right, we're off to Hemwick Charnel Lane, a very short, kind of tricky if you're not careful area, with a very, very easy boss at the end. <laughs> like, ridiculously easy. Um, yes, yeah, so that's it, we're just going to go there and do that. It's a side area off Cathedral Ward, but we will go to the Grand Cathedral where we fought uh, Vicar Amelia. And we're going to go work our way back from there. So we're basically going to go down the stairs and uh, to the right-hand side. So yeah, this is where we fought Vicar Amelia. And then we're going to go down and uh, watch out for the guys outside this door. Because they do hit hard if you're not expecting them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get the Ludwig's Ludwig, however you want to say it, Holy Blade at the end of this... Um, this episode I'll have enough souls, uh, souls. <laughs> Blood Echoes, you should as well uh, if you want to buy it, obviously you don't, don't have to. Uh, but I will just mention something while there's not much going on uh, about scaling, how that kind of works. Um, so the weapon we're using here, uh, if you are using the same one as me, Hunter's Axe scales off skill and strength. So that's why I'm putting points into strength all the time, because it does increase your, your damage output. Um, but anything, any weapons that scale with strength obviously get bonus damage kind of thing from it as well. But then there's also a rank with the scaling. I think at the current, when you first get it at zero without any upgrades, it's uh, a rank D. Uh, but as you upgrade it, I think it goes up to the most. I think it's B when it's a plus 10. So it's not the best for scaling at all, um, this weapon. There are uh, weapons that are a lot better at it than... Uh, than this one so that's why I'm primarily going for strength because that's all we need we're just trying to make this as basic as possible so to get you through to the platinum so you don't have to worry too much about all those numbers that are going on in the background um, yeah so the, the sword we will be getting scales off skill and strength equally more towards the skill end of things um, and arcane as well but don't worry about having to put points in Arcane or Skill particularly. You will need to put a few into Skill to be able to use the Holy Blade if you're going to grab it uh, and start using it. I just kind of use it as a side thing. When I first get it, I'll put the two uh, kind of healing gems that we have in it and just equip it now and again when I want just when I'm running around and uh, start healing up um, for free, basically. Uh, and then eventually I'll put a fire gem in it when it's leveled up enough and um, use it against certain enemies to stop worms appearing. That's about what I use it for. But um, Arcane scales with anything that deals fire damage. So the higher your Arcane, the higher your fire damage. Uh, and Bolt as well, I think. Uh, we haven't got any Bolt yet. But there's Bolt paper, the same there is uh, fire paper. So, um, yeah, Arcane... So something like a Molotov, I think, actually does more damage... If your arcane level is higher, think of it as kind of like magic. Um, it's not necessary for what we're doing. So yeah, the the, the blade we're getting and the, the reason that um, most people probably like it more is it does scale uh, up to the point of B or A in both skill and strength. So it does scale very well. So it is a stronger. The the damage output is more uh, in its base form than this axe is. But I do like the rally. The rally goes up with this axe as well. So you see there I'm getting my health back. Hitting through dead enemies there. So watch these three guys as well. They are quite difficult. You saw me take a moment just to sort of dance back and forth. So there's lots of shooters in this forest. Um, so do, do be aware. They can be all in the trees. So just take your time here. And those three, sometimes four there, uh, can kind of stun lock you and kill you instantly. So do watch out. Uh, yeah, we're not even in... The, uh, the Hemwick Channel Lane yet. We're just in a kind of a mid area yet. Um, so yeah, the that's why I use this weapon. is for the Charge R2. The the health back it allows you to be a bit more aggressive, and yeah, just sort of the the sort of power and the feel of it. Because when you've got it in this mode, it's uh, in double handed, two handed. It feels more like a, um, a halberd. So it has. Uh, really good reach and obviously it has a really good swing on it it's good for crowd control it's just how i prefer i'm not going to try and justify it to you <laughs> you either like it as well or you don't uh, but yeah you will have the opportunity to get that um that other blade later on uh, purchase it we can buy it now we just probably don't have enough blood echoes at this point um 
so yeah, get that later on. I'm not like I said, I'm not going to go too much into detail with arcane and skill and things like that. Uh, just briefly go over it if you need to know it. Um, that's probably all I'm going to mention about it. Uh, don't want to get too deep into the numbers, but obviously if you want to go and explore numbers, mess around with weapons, of course, feel free, play around with that. But I know weapon, uh, numbers and things like that in RPGs do actually put the sort of casual player off. So that's why I'm trying to make this as kind of easy as possible. Right, we're in Hemwick Channel Lane yet yeah, now. And these aren't, I don't think they're witches. They're just crazy women with uh, meat axes. <laughs> uh, crazy old women. Um, and they're extremely fast, extremely ridiculous. Probably some of the fastest enemies in the game. Uh, they will creep up on you in an instant. So standing back and charging your R2 before they're even near you is a really good tactic with these people, with these, with these women, uh, these old women, because they will charge straight into your attack. So be careful of the ones with the kind of fire pokers because they can get you from a distance. But they, if you try and just kind of hit them with R1 like you might normally try and do. They quickly recover from the knockback and will come straight at you and they will hit you very quickly. So yeah, do be aware of those, uh, the witches. Try and take them out, lead them one by one. Do not get them in a group. They will make quick work of you. This is a shortcut we'll open up shortly. This area is very short anyway. If you want to hear the most terrifying noise in the world, go to this window. <laughs> you can't hear it now because I'm talking, but my God, is it disturbing. It, it, there's no importance to it or anything like that. Just just try it out. Um, yeah, and pick up some... There's lots of twin blood shards. Um, we will be getting leveling up. I think I'm one short of uh, the final twin blood shard level at the end, which is uh, unfortunate, but we will get more. And then we can start putting them into a second weapon then, if, uh, if you want to, of course. So yeah, it's uh, just be patient in this area. Actually, the dogs aren't too bad in this area. They're not... Like the the sort of beigey brown dogs, they're uh, a bit more chunky and slower, uh, so it, it is actually they're better as far as dogs go uh, in this game. You do have more of a, an attack window before they're straight back on you. So yeah, the reason I hung around the stairs is because there's one with uh, molotovs at the top there, so watch out for them. Quite a few of them have molotovs, but don't run straight up. There is another one, so let this other one come down, and uh, of course charge R2 dead <laughs> so yeah it's kind of their downfall that they have to run right into you because it allows you to take them down with uh, pretty easily to be honest as long as they're alone you will see a group of them right towards the end and they do they chase you down it's pretty terrifying to be honest uh, yeah don't give you much chance to breathe so uh, yeah we're just cleaning up grab this here we're gonna go up these stairs there is gonna be a, a troll brick guy whatever they're called uh, the heavy hitters uh, and then there's going to be a gate ahead of us which is going to be locked and we have to open it from the other side but it is a, uh, a shortcut once we do it so there's weirdly this this is a really short area and there are two shortcuts there's a shortcut within the shortcut <laughs> there's a shortcut to open the shortcut it's yeah there's bigger areas that could have done with more shortcuts than this uh, especially where Amygdala is. Oh my god, I hate that area. <laughs> we'll be going there. Not right away. But uh, yeah, I don't like it. Poison. Poison swamps. They're never fun. So yeah, take that down. Then run around here. You're going to find another pair of twin blood stone shards. So two. Should be collecting a nice amount of those now. And then you're going to want to take it fairly easy through this shortcut. Or leading to the shortcut. Um, because witches, I'm just checking here, I thought there was another, there's not, so don't worry. Uh, there's a, a witch to the left here, or an old lady, I don't think they are actually, maybe they are witches, I don't know. Uh, here, it's, I thought there was, so I kind of <laughs> went down the stairs, I thought, hang on, there's one here, and I was right, there is. So watch out for that one. Yeah, cause they can see they're relentless, they come straight after you all the time. They do not uh, give up easily, but they are easy to kill crows here and this is the shortcut the lift so once you've got through and uh, dealt with these annoying crows you can see it just ahead of me there there's a few off to the right here I don't know why I, I know this is a pebble but I just feel like I have to kill everything <laughs> I don't want anything creeping up on me so 
so uh, everything has to die. There we go. All that for the four pebbles. <laughs> so yeah, to open up a shortcut, of course, you have to get on it and activate it once. So you do have to ride it down. Uh, go listen to that crazy woman in the house again if you want. That was uh, not <laughs> a nice sound. And then uh, back up and continue on. So there's a shortcut within the shortcut kind of thing. Yeah, definitely not needed. Ah, <laughs> too soon. Nope, got it just. Thought she'd uh, be quicker than that, but she wasn't. Some bone marrow ash. I haven't mentioned bone marrow ash. It's not something I use. It um, allows for more damage with uh, firearms for a short period. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, if you use it. We get a, a firearm later on called a cannon, which is a, uh, it takes up a lot of uh, Quicksilver bullets when you use it. I think it's 10 or 12. I think they changed it in a patch. I haven't actually used it since the patch um, Yeah, it's uh, a lot so you can but if you can use a bone marrow ash to get the da damage output to be more It's good for aiming at uh, bosses bosses heads, but uh, you only get one or two shots uh, Yeah, it's uh, it's okay. Not th something I'd like to rely on though, but we'll get that later on so there's uh, there's going to be one uh, a woman's going to drop behind you here, so we're trying to get her to to drop. We have to go forward and get the dog to come out at the same time. It's kind of a pincer move that they're doing. So there is one behind me that she drops down. So I don't know where actually she comes from, but uh, be aware of that. And again, always attacking through a dead uh, body as they're dying to get that extra bit of rally, that extra bit of health back. It all helps. Uh, we do have torches. I will equip it at the end of this video. Uh, if you want to make dark areas like this lighter, put a torch in your weapon hand um, just for lighting things like torches do. Uh, we do have two. We have the normal and we have the hunter torch. We pick them both up. They are weapons or count as for the trophy. Uh, so yeah, there was a um, another scurrying beast, so kill that. Uh, the eyeballs. We're going to get quite a few of these. You're probably wondering what they're for while we're getting them. Uh, they are for chalice rituals, so um, don't worry about them. I don't think we even use eyeballs for any of the chalices, uh, for the one, the, not for the tr the platinum anyway. Um, yeah, so we do get quite a lot, but we don't actually need them. So watch out for that sneaky, sneaky one in there in the chair on the right hand side. The squeaking from below, you probably hear it as you go through. The squeaky wheels gives it away. So uh, yeah, another gem, some more madman's knowledge. You should have more than enough, uh, probably 60 or so soft, so the eye in the top corner by the time we finish, and 60 or so hard uh, mad, um, insight by the time we finish the game. Lots and lots, so you can buy, buy stuff from the... Uh, there's a second um, bath, messenger bath in Hunter's Dream. I'm sure I've showed you. I hope I have. <laughs> Uh, there's a second one at the top of the stairs on the left where you can buy stuff with insight uh, Yeah, that's where you can buy some uh, upgrade materials later on. I will be doing it So if I haven't showed you already, I will show you We just don't need anything yet. So more witches more trolls. Yeah, if you can kind of get them to uh, Yeah, it didn't work with that one. It does with the witch afterwards that the timing on that that was uh, too close. Anyway, yeah, the yeah, a witch and anything else is not. I can get my timing pathetically wrong at this point. Yeah, there we go. One. Obviously, it's not leaving me the dodge time. Two, and she's backing away as she's uh, sort of attacking. She backs away, which is uh, messing my timing up. Never mind. That's how not to do it. Uh, yeah, what I was going to say is if you can get them to walk through the fire, they will take damage. And it will happen to the one in a moment. There's one to the left here, so watch out. Yeah, see, so you can get them to walk into it. Unfortunately, she doesn't die from it, but yeah, you get the idea. Any fire in the game can be used to damage enemies. Yeah, watch out for the dog. If there's enough room, quickly do an R2. Get rid of her, and then get rid of the dog. 
So there's going to be one in the right as you go through this door. So don't go through the door just yet. So grab that. That's another twin. Uh, yeah, so just stand just outside this doorway and charge up and she'll come to you. There she is. She'll grab you and uh, try and slit your throat, <laughs> which is charming. So do watch out for that one. Sneaky little surprise there. And then we've come all the way down. We're at that gate, the other side of the gate now. There's a few, a couple, two executioners here and one up the, the, the hill. So watch out. I tried to get out without him noticing, but failed miserably. And yeah, well, that was close. Yeah, so just circle them until you get a good window. And uh, two, obviously, because <laughs> two, two charge our twos, because that's what I do uh, to take it down. And there we go. So that's the shortcut open. That's this area done, essentially, as quick as that is. Uh, you can see how short this video is compared to the others we've done. Um, yeah. So that's a run back to the boss now if you need it. But I will do uh, mention a backup save just before we go in. Just makes things easier than having to run back. So if you can hit these in the back, you'll get extra damage as well. Anything you hit in the back. I don't know what that attack was that it did. It sort of headbutted me. I've not seen that before. Um, it was a quick attack, which I'm not used to those having. So there's a lot of dogs down here. Watch out. This monolith type thing here on the right of me. Uh, you'll see it in a moment. Um, it uh, leads to another place. We need an invitation yet, which we'll get shortly. So that one there. Oh, yeah, nope, that one. That one dead ahead. That one. <laughs> Uh, we'll get a, uh, an invitation from Yusefka's clinic. We'll go into Yusefka's clinic again uh, via the back entrance and uh, grab an invitation and then we need to stand in front of that there, that monolith, whatever it is, and um, we'll get taken to Castle Canehurst or Canehurst Castle, whatever you want to call it. But that's going to be later on, so we will be back here. Uh, yeah, so watch out again. Nearly die, nearly die here. This is really bad. From, uh, yeah, so I'll get thrown one and then I run into it, jump right into it, and then get hit by the. Oh, that's close. That was, uh, <laughs> bad. So, yes, don't do that. Dodge round somebody who's throwing Molotovs at you as opposed to running straight into them and jumping and getting smashed in the face with it. Because it definitely hurts. So at the end of here is going to be the Lake Rune. So after we've finished the boss of this area, we will be able to equip runes. We can equip four at a time, which is excellent. Uh, three normal ones, these kind of grey ones, and then one of the special ones, which is a blue one. You don't get many of those in the game, the blue one. Probably only two, to be honest, uh, that we will get. Um, neither of them particularly very good, to be honest. But the rest can be. Uh, we're able to hold more uh, blood vials, things like that. So, yeah, they can be good. But for now, yeah, watch out for this executioner. There's a chest here, so you're going to want to kill him. So, sneak in, give him a quick whack. Uh, he did. <laughs> he managed to get one out on me as well. That's not good. So, there are three witches. So, you can see me kind of watching behind me. There are three coming down the hill. So, be aware of them. Another bloodstone gem there. Yeah, so you're going to see what three witches are like together. You can get lucky here and get all three to run into a charge R2 if you're lucky. Um, or the one will hang back just in... Sort of... Yeah, this is annoying. Uh, just enough to start throwing Molotovs uh, in your path. Yeah, look at them. They just do not give up. It's, uh, it's dangerous. So you can see I did an extra hit on that one that was falling. That was just to get the health. Uh, in case I got hit from the other one, rather than dodge back. Whew. <laughs> Nearly at the end there. Buckled. So at the top here, there's going to be... We're at the boss now, so I'm just going to go into this room. I'm going to hit these barrels on the left here. That's going to cause a beast to fall down the hole there. So make sure you get that. There's going to be another couple of uh, twins probably for you. There we go. And uh, Madman's Knowledge, and then quit out, do a backup save if you want. It is not necessary for this boss. This is a very, very easy boss. I do it for the sake of um, 
making sure I have a clean boss fight for you to watch. Uh, yeah, so here we go. Witches, uh, no, sorry, the Witch of Henwick, but actually, Witch of Henwick. So run in, turn around, this is where she'll be. So Charge R2 is really good against this because you can get the knockback and stunner. Um, and then look out, you can see just in the left corner there, she appeared. Um, ignore these things, these kind of nightmare things, you can just completely ignore them if you want. If there's one in front of you like that, then do feel free to take it out. But you can, for the most part, just ignore them, uh, and I will be doing. So a quick dash, because they do have an AoE that they use sometimes, just to stun them, and then charge, knock back. Uh, if you're able to get another charge in, you will get some more damage. Now there are actually two witches, a bit slow on that one so I miss. There are actually two witches which you're going to see in a minute. Um, so yeah, at this point you just need to look around. If you don't see this kind of flash of red where she lands, then uh, you'll need to run about. So this corner, uh, at the top of these stairs here, she can be sometimes uh, drop down. She can be underneath those stairs, she can be in this corner here, or in this corner here. This is the second witch. So if you hit one and you don't do any damage to the boss bar, then you've got the second one. You still need to kill her, so just go in on her anyway. Uh, this again is the second one, I'm only finding the second one. So uh, just the same thing, just keep going, uh, trying to kill her, and look around. So I don't see it, the, the one I need is actually on the left there, I'm just out of range. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to find her, trying to figure out where could she could actually be, but she's actually just on the other side. I'm going to find the second one again now. Uh, where is she? I think she's uh, back where I actually initially hit her. Yeah, actually, yeah, here she is. So this is the second one again. You can see what I mean about just ignoring the nightmares. You don't even need to bother. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to miss on that one. So yeah, just let them ignore, ignore them. If you have zero insight, those guys don't even show up. Here she is. Oh no, this is the second one again, I think. Yeah, it is. So I've killed the second one. The first one lets herself be known, which weirdly she's over here, I don't know why. Uh, yeah, and we're going to get the finish on her, and there we go, that's it. So these nightmares do disappear, but not straight away, so be careful. There we go. And that's it, some more bloodshot eyeballs, and that's the witch is of Hemwick. Um, very, very easy. They do have their own attacks, so be careful, but as long as you're on top of them uh, and go in, Especially if you do a charge. If you see them do a, a weird, like, tuck themselves in, they're about to do an AoE, which can hurt, so watch out for that. But it's it's very hard to die to the witches. So, uh, yeah. Most importantly, we go down here and we get the rune tool. We can now use runes, the second bench in the uh, Hunter's Dream. So that's what we'll do. And, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. I'm just going to do some cleaning up back of Hunter's Dream. I'm going to purchase... Uh, Ludwig's Holy Blade there you can see so that's one of the weapons we do need for the trophy so uh, I put it down there but 20,000 while I've got it I might as well don't worry about Blood Echoes uh, when we get to Chalice Dungeons you will get hundreds of thousands I think in the last Chalice Dungeon the last area you can get up to half a million without much effort at all so yeah it's uh, all relevant so here's the, the rune um, Alter, so you can see what it does, extra vials, uh, more bl blood echoes from visceral attacks, extra damage reduction, and prolonged uh, beast effect. So you can equip three, so do the three good ones, communion, air, lake, if you have all three. So yeah, do move along, you can see the slots in the top there, and then you have the oath memory one. So you've got memory one, two, three, and then oath. So we don't have an oath one yet, so we'll leave that for now. Uh, but yeah, just equip three, and we'll switch through those as we get new ones. Uh, now I'm going to repair, and then I'm going to level up, fortify. So the Hunter's Axe, I've got enough for one. Unfortunately, not just short of uh, making it a plus six, which is a shame, but never mind. And then I'll do uh, up to plus three on the Holy Blade, because that is normal Bloodstone Shards, not twin. I don't want to use any twins on it yet. Uh, I want to put them into the, the Hunter's Axe. And then, uh, yeah... I'm just seeing if the, any of the gemstones I have are better than the ones I want. A quick test to see if they are better is watch for the numbers to go blue, the physical attack. Uh, that's the the best way I look at it. The rest are kind of niche, so you wouldn't really need them in a, just a random area. And then what I'm going to put on the Holy Blade is going to be the tear blood gem, so it's going to be plus two recovery. 
And then um, there's another one that I have that gives you, there it is, plus one recovery. Uh, and I'm just going to get it out now and again when it's downtime just to heal. Because I'm not going to rely on it at this point because it's not strong enough. I might as well just use the axe. Um, but yeah. I can't equip it yet, but I can equip a torch. So I said I'd show you. Here we go. Here's a hunter's torch in the, the offhand, kind of the, uh, the weapon hand. And then we have the holy blade. We do need 12 skill to uh, equip it. You can see there in the bottom, in the middle, twelve. the 12 is red because we don't have 12 skill yet. So I will just go and put um, get 12 skill, basically, so I can use it. Not necessary at this point, so don't go burning through your um, blood echoes if you don't want to. Just keep going with uh, strength, enjoying vitality. You can get skill eventually if you want. Uh, if you're not bothered about using the weapon, then don't. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to crack a few of the, uh, the Jews or the cold blood that I have. To, um, I could have used multiple there, I just wanted to see what it was worth. So just one, two, and then a different one to get me up. It's enough. So that gets me up to 12, or level 12 on skill now. Um, like I said, I'm not going to rely on this weapon, so I'm not going to keep going up with skill. I'm just going to have enough to use it. Uh, and then it's going to be strength, vitality, endurance all the way. So when you get to a certain level of strength, your R2 charge attack becomes even more powerful. So there we go. I've just equipped it in my other hand. So I can switch back and forth between the we two weapons now using the right stick, uh, the right D-pad. And the same with the left D-pad for the gun and the torch. Right, that's it for this one. We're going to be off to the Hypergen Jail in the next episode. Hopefully you've not been there already, but uh, it's the first time I'm going there. Right, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.